zero. Zero. Okay, this is Uncle Bert Lamb saying hello from Beastburg. We're broadcasting from Planet Dark Star today to your planet Earth. We want to thank you for sending Earth songs to us in musical notation format and for making them show up as screensavers on our idle computers. This Dark Star Journal show is a sort of return gift from our little group. On Dark Star, it is 3215. It's the eighth month, August, and the third day of the month, which this year falls on a sunny Thursday. Today I started my morning routine at the usual time. Still wearing her nighty, my eldest daughter, Acrylic, came upstairs before breakfast to visit me briefly in my attic studio, which is strictly against our house rules, as this is my only home time for penciling cartoons. Acrylic was eager to share an idea she had just woken up with. Ellie Ram, Acrylic's 17-year-old daughter, has been away all summer down in the country visiting her Ram cousins above West Cleanser, but she just came back to spend a long weekend at home. Our youngest, Rayon, with her hot new boyfriend, Curly Lamb, drove her back yesterday. Acrylic's idea was to pull Ellie home to Beastburg early with the offer of covering for baby Lambkin at the archive. Ellie could make some money over the next month while baby is away and also experience working in a grown-up job before heading back to her school. It sounded wonderful to me, so Acrylic called Amanda Rabbit to get it by her and also contacted Mrs. Persian, who thought it acceptable. Then Acrylic went down to tell her mother and offered the plan to Ellie herself, who, as I guessed, loved the idea. It turned into a raucous breakfast with Rayon and Curly sharing funny stories of recent sailing adventures when, all of a sudden, our middle daughter, Woolen, came racing unexpectedly through the front gate. Rushing in the front door, she nearly tripped over Ellie's robot, Arnett, who had to roll out of the way at high speed and screeched off into the sitting room looking both hurt and mortified. I can't stay, Woolly told us, but I have an announcement. I'm in a secret, same-sex, interspecies relationship with Martha Tiger. She's going to own, with me, the two houses I'm buying from her father, and we're going to spend the rest of our lives living together. We know it's illegal, but we think we can get away with it, as if it was just a living arrangement we are making as friends. But we need all of you to commit to keeping our secret. For one thing, her father must never know, as he'd hate the whole thing and might, well, even make trouble for us. Putting her hand on my shoulder, Woolly went on, Papa, you can tell the archive board as they're good at secrets, but nobody else. I'm sorry to spring this on you all, but we've needed time to work everything out between us, and now that things are moving fast, we badly want my family on our side, as I know you will be. No one said a word for a moment, but Rosabella stood up to hug her daughter tightly. And for the first time since she was a child, I saw Woolly holding back tears. Even before Rosabella had let go of her, Woolen spoke up. I've got to leave now, but I promise there will be time later in the summer for lots of talk about this. And, she added, I look forward to everyone getting to know my darling Martha. Then, without waiting around for anyone to say anything, Woolly broke away and ran back out to the street. Boy, that was something, said Ellie, breaking the silence. And Rayon replied, Yes, but it's also amazing that today you're going to work at the archive. And everyone talked about that. And strangely, not another word was said about Woolly's bombshell news during our breakfast. Acrylic and Ellie and I walked over to the archive together, and, of course, we talked of nothing but Woolly and her bizarre ragtag of old boyfriends, and this sudden exotic direction her life has taken. I had to admit Rosabella and I were wondering what was going on, and then Acrylic said Woolly had been telling her everything. When we got to the archive, baby Lambkin showed Ellie the ropes and then took her out to lunch across the way to her mother's underbridge diner. I could tell that Ellie was excited and charmed to be so warmly welcomed onto the team. 
Einstadt Chimp came in first thing for a second day of private talks with acrylic. He remained all morning and had a bite to eat with us at lunch before requesting a one-on-one with me up in the cupola. All these years at the Jackster Archive, it's nine years since I was first offered the archivist's job, I've never before had a sit-down talk with Einstadt. Back then, he was like the boss, and I often tried to book myself in for a chat, but he'd just laugh me off as if I was some kind of a joke. At his suggestion, we sat outside on one of the built-in benches so that we too could get some sun and enjoy the view. Clever old Einstadt is junior-sized even for a chimp, and his legs hung down without touching the roof of the archive. The first thing Einstadt said absolutely amazed me. Uncle Bert, he said in his absurdly strong East Continental accent, I've had a good talk with your daughter, Acrylic, and she tells me about the subject of the book she has been writing on. I couldn't believe it. Acrylic has been writing a romantic novel for a decade now without saying a word to Rosabella or me about its subject. How did you get her to tell you? I exclaimed, and Einstadt chuckled at me. I included a system of randomizing extra searches here whenever an Internet search is made. That way no one on the outside can know our actual business. You'll remember I talked to you and your acrylic about this when we first built the archive up here. Not me, I'm afraid, I told him. But I do tend to zone out the technical, and maybe I wasn't at my best that year. In any case, Einstadt continued, I occasionally monitor the Internet system, and what Acrylic has really been doing is researching the Boar Island group, and particularly the largest one, War Mongrel. And in this process, she has involved herself in some very original research. But what about her novel? I asked. Guess the connection, said Einstadt. Her ex, Felix Ram, inherited his dad's Ramsgate Industries. War Mongrel had it for dinner in a hostile takeover. Is that it? Einstadt grinned darkly. That's a yes. Actually, though, Felix engineered the sell-off of Ramsgate. It was all his babykins. Let me tell you, when Acrylic was starting work on her novel, she tried to imagine nefarious schemes Mr. Naughty Ex-Husband might get up to after joining Warmongrel as a vice president. Once she started following that trail, she got hooked on chasing it up and down the stairs. And what long stairs? Einstadt kept laughing. The old Boar Island group joke to do with the Big Seven is they are planning to become the Big One and go for corporate domination of the planet. Acrylic believes it's no joke and that her ex-husband, Felix Ram, is a big part of it. Of course, world domination is a game big boys love most to play, but uh, usually losing all their shirts. It's a game for only the completely insane. Still, this time your nice, quiet daughter has found one of the great secrets of our age, and you should be proud. Proud? I said. Are you kidding? I'm disappointed that Acrylic has been hiding something so important and dangerous from her family and friends. And for our animal world, for Darkstar, I'm infinitely alarmed.